Darkmoon Fair. Dancing minigame. Who knows what it's going to be like? Hopefully it'll be fun. I'm, the more closer we are to the Manderville Gold Saucer, the better. Well, as long as it feels somewhat just the tiniest little bit better than the roller coaster. Because I still really, really have concerns that something like that was greenlit. So I hope the dancing minigame is a little bit more in quality to the other minigames in yes. Dark Moon, which are quite good. Well, the roller coaster is not really a minigame. It's just a click no, it's and just a, work. It's just a big use of space. Like, I think it was just a cute thing that somebody yeah. threw in in a week. Not on a weekend, but yeah, yeah, I think it was like a little nice to have. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, there's this mini game, a um, whole bunch of achievements for it. Look, cool. I could maybe give someone a little bit of an afternoon of entertainment, so that's all good stuff. Hmm. Some other uh, 9.2 stuff. So there's the Solo Shuffle Developer Preview. This is a feature that we've, you know, we haven't played yet, obviously, but we've praised. It seems like an innovative solution. Yep, this breakdown is fantastic. Yeah. Like, fantastic. Yeah. And this is what we love to see from Blizzard. We're very happy about So. Yep. Solo Q, those words have been a rallying cry for parts of the community. Today, they would like to share more information about what they're experimenting with. So why Solo Q? Because there's time you just want to press a button and be in the arena. Mm -hmm. Skirmishes exist. But for many, they're not an appealing option. I mean, you know, the rating isn't there. The rewards aren't there. Yeah, you know, it's, the, it's the, the real mode. Like. Yeah, the best gear rewards are from the content that requires a pre-made group. So while they understand the desire to have solo queue arena, they have some reservations about adding it to the existing brackets. While it's very likely it will increase overall participation, it also means players won't need to form groups to participate. You know, so um, they're thinking about that. Queued systems can make other players feel more dispensable since replacements are only a few button clicks away. The process of assembling group for an activity provides immeasurable value to the social dynamics of a game like WoW. Hey, it's good to hear them talk about this, isn't it? As such, they prefer to keep the pre-formed group requirement for those brackets. Another concern is uh, the impact of team comp on fairness. I mean, what if you solo queue and the best it can do is give you a shit comp and you're going to be beaten? Yeah. And then how do they always have a system that manages to come up, or, you know, to, to know the meta? You mm. probably could use some neat, like, big data about win rates and stuff to be able to pair matches up in a fair manner, actually. But, uh... Yeah, and then harder that, to yeah. do. Then that means if you're playing an off-meta class, then you never get a queue, and yeah, that's all to do with you. Yep. Yeah. So um, in WoW, characters are defined by their class. When you queue, you are playing a specific class and cannot change in response to what your teammates are playing. And they're basically just going around the you know the issue of meta and stuff like that. And pretty damn hard to solve that with a solo queue. It's not like in other in a bunch of other games. Yeah. So they're talking here about the the shuffle. So they're putting a new idea forward for solo queue that they think addresses the problems in a unique and novel way. Their idea is a new bracket they're calling solo shuffle. This bracket is solo queue only. Each time you hit the queue button, you're placing a cohort of six players, two healers, four damage. This cohort will play six rounds, compromising every uh, possible combination of teams made up of one healer and two damage dealers. Players will have to adopt a wide variety of comps, so will their opponents. So in the case above, both rogues will end up playing with the mage, and both rogues will end up playing with the death knight. After all six rounds are completed, players will earn or lose rating based on the results. So if a player wins all six rounds, they'll get more rating than somebody that only wins three rounds. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of go into a further illustration here. You know, if you, if you have these people in, this is what the six matches will look like. Yep. Of course, six rounds of traditional 3v3 arena has the potential to take cons a considerable amount of time. When players queue up for an activity, we'd prefer uh, it didn't require 30 minutes of time. The longer the activity goes, the less likely people are to queue for it, and the more likely they are to abandon a match in progress. So there will be some fundamental differences in solo shuffle that force the games to end quicker. Naturally, the lack of coordination for pre-made groups will result in faster kills, but to help ensure each round resolves in two or three minutes, they're making some rule changes. Unlike a regular arena, the first team to kill an opponent immediately wins the round. Yeah, that's yeah. right, yep. Mana regeneration is further restricted, and drinking will work differently, or perhaps not at all. If a player leaves, the match is resolved as if the player lost every round. Aye. We're approaching this idea carefully, as adding a new PvP uh, format is a big commitment. Our intent is to implement this as a PvP brawl first, so we can experiment with the format, discover problems, receive feedback. If this is well received during the brawl, we can dig into the plan for rating changes, dealing with people abandoning the match, how ladder will work, and rewards. This article 
is the first step in that progress process. So please share your thoughts. Great. Now, here's what, what I will say. Try to put this in, not as a brawl. Make it so that people can get loads of conquests from doing this. Make it so they can get gear. Because I think this really needs to be given a good shot. Yeah. Um, and in a way where, you know, it's not just a cool brawl to do once or twice. Mm -hmm. In a way where people could actually try to do this as one of their main formats of PvP for an extended amount of time. So Blizzard can get really good data. Um, but fundamentally, I'm just really excited that they're they're really addressing this problem. That they're addressing it with effort and creating a novel solution. So yeah. you know, this is great work. This is what we want to see be done in World of Warcraft. And this is the type of communication that we want to see as well. So with this, for the WoW team, it is, you know, it's full marks in every category. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's... The idea of it being a brawl is fine as long as it's an extended brawl. Because they, like they said, they didn't want to just actually go ahead and implement it as a whole new thing because yeah. that would be a huge amount of time and then there'd be, so, yeah. you know, you can't just say well, risk all your, go completely risky on one good idea you have so I think it's fair as long as they keep it open long enough and it's incentivized long enough to have people do it. They really should like massively tune up rewards because yep. if this is them laying the foundation for the future of PvP, then they can maybe throw a little bit of today's PvP under the bus if they want yeah. this to be the actual like, real way it goes forward. If this succeeds, people will do it to earn conquest in a yeah. primary way and maybe even to push rating and earn really good gear. Yeah. So whenever we're testing the system out, it should be under those conditions because we don't want the problem of, you know, players play a beta differently to how they play live because on live it's actually their character and it matters. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, look, I just think it's, it's great. And whenever we see good things like this, we really have to praise. Um, we have to, you know, give them their due. It's only fair. Um, you know, we, you, you know, we criticize them pretty damn heavily uh, whenever we think something's worth criticizing. Mm. But I think you only really have the, I mean, I don't mean everyone's got the right to say whatever the fuck they want, but I think you only really have the right to do that and be respected. Mm. If when they do something right, you're willing to say you did that right. Well done. We're very happy about this because uh, otherwise it's just acting in bad faith and it's not fair. So there you go. Now there's also some more good news. There's a Maldraxxus Coliseum and also... Um, uh, yes, the Enigma Arena. So a first one's and a Maldraxxus one. The Enigma Arena. Um, yeah, created by Progenitor's ever-changing ever battlefield. A switch yeah. at the center can be used to create cover for yourself and allies or deny it to opponents. That's really cool. Yeah. So yeah. You know, it is big thumbs up here. It is yeah. big thumbs up. 